Okay, so um, the HEVAC unit's out of the Range Rover. And uh, as you can see here, it's on the test bed and the screen is not working. We've got dead segments. Generally, if you push around down here, segments come back, although on this one they don't. Um, the bulb on this one was already, had already blown, so I've replaced that just so I can show the screen not working. The test bed we have wired up here allows us to turn the electric seats on, go on to program mode as well because we've wired it up so it believes the engine is running. It just allows us to do a full uh, check of all the bulbs on the, on the unit. Okay, so with the HEVAC unit unplugged, the first thing you need to do is remove the front, which is done via these two screws at the top here, one on either side and four along the bottom here. They're relatively small screws, but um, they come undone very easily. So I think we'll now cut to uh, these undone. Okay, with the screws removed, the front simply pulls away, and then the ribbon cable here plugs in to the main circuit board at the back. Personally, I can get my fingers in here and remove the plug, like this. Uh, if you can't uh, get your fingers in there or are unable to actually remove it, you can simply remove these torque screws, which will allow the circuit board to come out of the box, and then it's much easier to remove it. So now what we need to do is uh, get down to where we fit the new Zebra connector, which means removing all of these screws uh, which are in the uh, half circled or half whitened circles. Uh, they're actually there so we know where to put them back because as you can see there's these holes here which are the ones screws we've just undone and we don't want to put the short little stubby screws in there. So uh, I think we'll now cut to uh, the bit where these are undone, Steve. Okay, with those screws undone, uh, it doesn't really matter how you take this off because at the end of the day, if it all falls to bits, you can put it back together again. However, I like, to, I like to keep it up this way, which means all the buttons will retain in the plastic housing. And also, I like to keep a finger on the uh, front screen here and press with that while my hand's on the back to keep pressure on the screen. Everything should then just lift out and then I can maintain the pressure with my thumb. And there we have it. Uh, it's just nice if you've only taken one of these to parts or this is the first time you've taken it to bits uh, Then you still know how everything goes nothing's fallen out and uh, it, you know exactly how to put it back together again So with the screen and the circuit board that attaches to laid in front of us now we can just uh, fold the screen forwards and Remove the green card remembering which way it goes although it will only fit one way I believe uh, so we'll just place it to one side and then you can quite clearly see here the ribbon cable which we're going to be replacing and it's the contacts on this or the connection between the cable and the screen or the cable and the board that uh, becomes detached over time, heat affects it and things like that. So we can remove this little rubber piece here, we won't actually be reusing that so that can be put to one side. And then we've got this little plastic uh, connector here, that's really, well it's not a connector, really it's just holding that rubber piece of rubber in place. Um, we will reuse it and uh, I think I'll just grab some long nose pliers so we can just pull that up and out. As you can see it just locates in on two little pins. We will be reusing that so I'll we'll just pop that to one side as well. Okay so to remove the cable quite literally you may well find yours has already half fallen off but just give it a gentle peel away and then when removing it from the screen don't know if you can show this, Steve, um, but we've got a slight deeper section in the screen there to the other side, and it's that side that the uh, connections are on the screen, and obviously it will only fit and work one way around. So uh, just uh, remove that as well. We can discard that because we will be replacing with the new, more modern Zebra connector that will just sit between the two, but before we can fit that, what we need to do is actually clean this now uh, so that we get a really nice connection and what we'll also do is clean the rotary connector on here for the um, fan speed controller because as you can see there's a lot of carbon deposits on there so a little clean uh, will improve how that function works as well. Okay so cleaning the screen off, obviously making sure you're on the correct side um, I like to use just a little bit of an electrical contact cleaner it's easily available and then uh, a piece of hard plastic um, I've just Cut a section off of a key tag here. Um, it's hard enough plastic that we can just work our way along. I try and avoid using a screwdriver because we don't want to scratch this. Um, and as you can see, just working along here. Patience is the key here. 
you can actually go all the way along. You can actually feel where the uh, sections of glue or ribbon are. We can clean that off, wipe it down, and then see where any areas are that we need to just finish off. I've got a, a tiny little bit left here that I need to get, which the camera possibly won't pick up, but I'll just go back over that again. Okay, so with the screen cleaned, we can do exactly the same process on the contacts on the uh, circuit board here. Uh, sometimes you do need to use something a little bit stiffer than or a little bit harder than the, the plastic. Um, I try and refrain from using a uh, metal screwdriver because you don't want to scratch the board. Um, however, sometimes the little plastic uh, screwdrivers that you get with um, repair kits for mobile phones actually work really well. Um, anyhow, you can do it with the plastic. Again, it's just a little bit more persistence. A um, little bit of contact cleaner on here. You can see I've worked halfway along. Uh, elbow grease is the key, or actually sort of more finger grease, just working your way along to clean the contacts off. Okay, so uh, what we can do now is replace the small plastic clip. Just pop that in there. And then put our zebra strip in place. With the screen, making sure you get the correct side, which is the, the large cutout there, and the green card. Pop the green card in place. It should kind of just sit in there. And then put the screen on. To position the screen, you want it evenly dis an even distance in the top corners on the white housing, plastic housing that it's fitting to. And then you hold it all together and put it into the front case, which I've forgotten to pop the auto switch out of. And if you have one as well, it's relatively easy to do, just like that. So, now we have to piece them together. So, maintaining pressure with this thumb, I'm just gonna pop that there and then come through with my index finger, maintaining pressure. And there it is together. Now what I like to do is to start with these two screws because they're the ones that are going to hold the uh, zebra strip in position and then this screw is screw number three to hold the screen in place and then I just plug it in and check it's working so we'll do that now. Okay so with these three screws in place I like to power it up now and uh, check that the screen is working. Um, it's a good idea to press the program button make sure all the uh, pixels are working there and then if we come out of program Rotate the fan switch, make sure that they're working as well. As you can see, this is all fully functional. So, also a good idea at this moment in time to check that all the bulbs are working. And uh, this one wasn't actually working in this particular unit. I replaced it at the beginning to uh, show you the screen at the start. And also now we can replace the auto button. The reason we don't leave that in uh, position when we're piecing it together is uh, these two posts here are very tricky to then get through the circuit board. It just makes life a little bit more difficult for you. Whereas if you pop it into place now, it's a lot easier, like that. And obviously you can then check it's working as well. So now, uh, as the good old manuals used to say, refitment is the reversal of removal. We'll put the uh, short screws back in position where the uh, white circles are that are half filled and then put it back together with the long screws through the back. So we'll get that on with that now. So that's the unit now back together, all complete. Um, if any of you are wondering what the beeping is in the back of the uh, video, we're powering this up off of a jump box and it's beeping to let us know it's on. Um, so yeah, hopefully yours has gone as smoothly as this one did. Um, obviously I've done a few, so uh, putting the screen in is uh, a bit easier for me. Uh, I have seen people use an elastic band to hold the assembly together, piece it together and then cut the elastic band. That can also work for you. So, uh, yeah, any questions, obviously get in touch. Thanks for buying the kit from us. And uh, the kit, if you're interested, if you're watching this video and you need the Zebra Strip, is available for our shop, uh, which is shop.vaengines.com. Or give us a call on 01603 891 209.